3D Coat has had some really nice upgrades for their 2025 version, and in this video I'm going to show you what I think are the most interesting. First of all, if you don't know by now, 3D Coat is a multitask studio pipeline application, much like Blender in many ways but with a stronger focus on sculpting, retopology, and texturing. Plus, it has a very nice hard surface workflow, so you can integrate hard surface modeling with organic sculptings with ease. For me, it's not something that replaces Blender, but complements it. And now it has an updated app link, so it supports Blender 4.3, 4.4, and 4.5, and I'm sure 5 will be along very shortly. This makes it super easy to jump back and forth between the two programs, so you can make model edits in Blender and then texture in 3D Coat. The best part is that you don't have to waste time setting up your textures in Blender. Once a textured model is sent from 3D Coat to Blender, all the texture nodes with the corresponding texture maps are automatically set up for you, making it a nice what you see is what you get workflow. The way it looks in the 3D Coat viewport is exactly how it will look in the EV viewport shading mode or Cycles Render straight away. The texturing tools within 3D Coat and the texture baking tools are a lot nicer, and this is an area where Blender's really lacking, unfortunately which is another reason to use both applications together. I do like Blender for sculpting, but I can see a lot of people liking 3D Coat because of all the available sculpting brushes, the sculpting layers, and they work even if a Boolean or a dynamic subdivision is applied. And they've got some quite clever Boolean tools as well. Another thing that's great in 3D Coat is the Auto Retopo toolset. And that's something, again, Blender doesn't currently have without add-ons. Also in 3D Coat, you can do things like photogrammetry, and it has a lot of nice 3D printing tools as well. There's certainly a lot to like about 3D Coat. Here's a quick run through of the new features in 2025, which shows they really understand what the users want and are catering to those users really well. So as I was saying before, and something that I'm excited to try out for myself, is the photogrammetry toolset. All this has been improved a lot with the 2025 release. It includes full integration of reality capture within 3D Coat. If you don't know already, photogrammetry involves taking lots of pictures of an object and then converting it into a 3D mesh. And what's great is that because it's all inside 3D Coat, you can take your scanned objects and then clean them up really easily with the voxel and mesh sculpting tools, including live booleans, and they've got soft booleans, which I'll talk about in a moment. You can automatically retopologize all these edits. You can automatically bake out the textures from your original messy, high poly scanned mesh to your retopologized low mesh. So that's great for things like games. And much of this process is automated, but you still get a great deal of control over this automation. So I think this is really great for those people that like to do 3D scanning for asset packs or even for 3D printing. And again, this toolset has all been updated in 2025 to make the process quicker and easier. Also new in 2025 is within the sculpting tools, there's a new surface array. So you can make a uniform or random array of objects on a created surface or on the selected face of a low poly mesh. This is something that makes sculpting hard surface repetitive objects so much easier. As I mentioned earlier, they've also introduced soft booleans. You can set the bevel radius to match the radius of the brush. This is the age old problem of when you boolean or cut one object with another, you get a very hard edge. But now in 3D Coat, we have what's called soft booleans to bevel or smooth out those edges. And you can set the bevel radius to match the brush radius so you can adapt that bevel. Another really interesting update is the normal map to mesh. You can add a normal map to a mesh as a texture and then convert that to actually displace geometry. Then you can leave it in if you're happy with the result or you could make it the starting point for further sculpting edits. In that way, you're kind of editing normal maps, which I think is fantastic. In that way, if you were to bake it back into a normal map, it gives you the ability to edit normal maps. I can think of lots of uses for that one, so that one could be very helpful. There's so many times I've downloaded a normal map and I thought it'd be really nice to go in and edit that, and here's the tool to finally do it. Also in 2025, we've got a new node room for building PBR shaders in the Sculpt workspace, which can be baked to a material whenever you want. It provides live updates on your sculpts, and it's looking surprisingly fast and performative, and apparently work is currently underway to make nodes for paint textures as well. In 3D Coat 2025, it only adds nodes for shaders in the sculpt room, which is not quite a complete set of nodes for texturing yet, but apparently the team is hoping that they'll implement nodes for texturing as well, and it should be something similar to Blender, Substance Designer, and Substance Painter, but that will be for 3D Coat 2026. In 2025, they've also added an interesting new feature called Lofted Surface for On-Plane Brush Control. Now this is a fascinating one because you can draw curves onto your surfaces, create geometry from those curves with the loft tool, 
and then you can actually sculpt onto those surfaces. So this is really useful for creating things like clothing or masks, and it's a nice clever addition. I mentioned 3D printing earlier, and they have a new tool called Remove Intersections. This creates a gap where two objects are intersecting. So in this example here, you can see that the bolt is intersecting the main body of the object. But in order for this to be 3D printed, there needs to be a hole for the object to be able to actually fit inside. So something like a Boolean or a cutout made with that object. But the only problem is that for 3D printing, it can't be precisely the same size. There must be a bit of a gap in order for it to be inserted and to fit in that opening correctly. And that's precisely what the Remove Intersections tool does. And it allows you to specify beforehand with a simple right mouse button click, the gap distance. Another great feature. I've said a fair bit about Booleans, but in 3D Code 2025, the live Booleans has also been improved. So you can get very complex Boolean operations that remain adaptable while still offering really good performance. I've also mentioned about the Retopo, but in 2025, you can now do this with multiple layers at the same time. So again, it just speeds up the workflow. Another sculpting feature in 2025 that I want to point out is the infinite move. So in the sculpting workspace, it allows you to apply a brush effect along everything in front of the brush, not just the specific part of the object it's touching. It's simple features like that that get added and don't get mentioned a lot, but I really like that one. There's also a lot of other interesting updates like the expanded graphics tablet support, and there's lots of UI improvements so you can really dive in and customize your experience for the way you want to use the program. So they really have gone to town with all the features to explore within the new version. And the other reason I'm a fan of 3D Code is their pricing plan. It has lots of options. You can get a subscription version or a perpetual license that comes with 12 months free updates. And you can even do a rent to own option that allows you to make monthly installments towards ownership of a perpetual license. Again, I feel like they are listening to the customer rather than just going ahead and saying there's one option and that's it. And there's even slimmed down versions for just texturing or just 3D printing. 3D Code Print is actually free, so it's well worth looking into. So I'm quite impressed with what they're doing and all the new features in 2025. If you want to check it out, then the links are in the description. 3D Code is currently having a Black Friday sale. So check the link in the description for the exclusive discount. And I'll keep the link up to date with further discounts they offer. Let me know what you think. I'd be really interested to hear about those that are using it on its own or whether people like me are supplementing Blender and using those additional features. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.